Tonal family, how are we doing tonight? My name is Kate. Welcome to Tonal Talk. I hope you're having a great week. If you are like me and you're doing Coach Nicolette's challenge, your glutes are so sore today. Um, but if not, I hope that you're able to sit down and stand up better than I am. Uh, tonight's guest uh, certainly knows a thing or two about being sore. Uh, he's been a Team USA gym gymnastics competitor, and he's going to be talking to us tonight about living a level 10 life. And we'll get into exactly what that means, but he is a fantastic guy, and I'm so excited to have him on tonight, Joshua Dixon. And in the meantime, I'm going to give you some updates while we wait for everyone to join, hello, hello. Let me know if you're in, if you're watching, if I'm all good. So as many of you saw, we have four new, three new fantastic guest coaches who are bringing their yoga and mobility skills to Tonal. Oh my goodness, they are so, so, so good. I've been obsessed. I've been doing them every single day. We've got Coach Venus with her mobility flows, Coach Jake and Coach Nikki. There's a range of recovery yoga, power yoga, and those mobility type workouts. Definitely give those a shot. There's a lot of ones that are 10, 20 minutes that you can slot in in the mornings, right after a workout, before a workout. They are so, so good. I'm having Venus, Nikki, and Jake on Tonal Talk next week on Tuesday. It's a special day uh, to accommodate the inauguration. So be sure to tune in then to get to know them. Try their content beforehand so you have maybe some questions to ask them or you can have some more context around who they are. But they are so good. You're going to love it. All right, what else do we have? Heart rate zones, those just launched on Tonal. If you have your Apple Watch, Apple Watch connected or a third party heart rate monitor, you can now see what zone you're in in real time, get that feedback. And then at the end, there's a summary on your trainer or in the mobile app that shows you how much time you spent in each heart rate zone. Very cool stuff. I know you all love data, so be sure to check that out. I uh, just wanted to recap that the Read Between the Reps book club is happening. Our first book is The Miracle Morning. Uh, we're about a third of the way through. And uh, it's not too late to join. Pick up your copy of the book. It is linked above. Check it out. We've got a few more check-ins on Mondays, and then we'll be doing a Zoom call at the end of the month. Now, finally, just wanted to reiterate that Coach Nicolette's Raising the Barbell 2 Challenge is happening. We are on the second week, but it is also not too late to join if you didn't know about the challenge. There's so much going on in this community that I know that it's tough to know what's happening at all times. So just wanted to reiterate that please join us if you haven't already. You can join in for the Facebook Live Q&As, for the virtual group workouts, for the end of the month happy hour. It's a good time. We're all learning so much. We're all so sore. Uh, that is also linked above. I think that's it. Should we get to the guest? Let's see if you guys have anything to say. Dale says, hello, hello, Dale. Pablo loves Venus's mobility boot camp. It is so good. My heart rate was like 160 during a mobility class. I was like, excuse me? Anyways, I digress. Tonight's guest is super special. He is wonderful and amazing. He knows a lot about finding su su success through good old fashioned hard work. He was born and raised in Silicon Valley fell in love with gymnastics at an early age and made it all the way up to Stanford University gymnastics team and then the U.S. gymnastics team. After retiring from gymnastics, Josh worked in the U.S. Senate before moving to Southern California, where he entered the private sector and is now building his own business consulting firm. He lives with his adorable dog, French bulldog Otis, who I'm hoping will make a little appearance in Newport Beach, California, and he uses Tonal to maintain his fitness. Please help me welcome Josh Dixon. Hey, Josh. Oh, we got a countdown and everything. How's it going? <laughs> oh, we fancy over here, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing well. It's a uh, exciting Wednesday, and happy to be here. I, I was giggling. You started the 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 live with the glute workouts, and then you're like, "Our next guest knows a thing or two about glutes." I was like, "Okay, we're going there." <laughs> yeah, we're doing that. We're going there. Show us your yeah. glutes, Josh. <laughs> Not that kind of show. Um, no, but I am so excited to have you. As soon as I saw you had a tonal, I think you posted something like, so excited to try this out. And I was like, oh, we got a U.S. gymnast. Yes. Yeah. And then I went on this rabbit hole of watching all of your videos. <laughs> I got to interview this guy. He's impressive. So thank you for being here with the tonal family. I've been sharing your videos and everyone's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. The, the, oh, hopefully only the good ones. There's very very public failures and successes. Are the there? I didn't see those. You're going to have to send them. 
Are there any like crazy, like broken bone moments or anything? Mm -mm, no, nothing graphic, just some falls and peeling off of equipment and things that aren't necessarily nice, but it's part of the sport. I mean, it's going to happen over a 20 something year career. Yeah. Um, speaking of your gymnastics career, can you give us like super high level overview of all of the badass things that you've accomplished in gymnastics? Yeah, uh, I guess in a, in a nutshell, I, I did my club gymnastics in the Bay Area. I was very, very fortunate to have um, just a lot of access to sports and youth sports programs when I was younger. Um, kind of progressed quickly through the junior ranks, had great coaches, um, was able to work hard enough to, to get to the junior national team level, um, kind of really had my eyes set on collegiate gymnastics. Uh, I attribute a lot of just life outside of sport to my parents. So going to college and then competing to college, was, competing in college was uh, an added bonus. So I, I did my gymnastics at the NCAA level at Stanford University. Uh, we did a pretty good job there and then made the jump onto the senior national team while in college um, and then went and trained with our US team at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado for uh, one Olympic cycle after I graduated. So um, yeah, kind of club, college, Team USA, and got the awesome opportunity to represent the stars and stripes in international competition and kind of see what that level of sport looks like. I think you're being a little bit modest about your accomplishments. Mm. Oh, you. yeah, there are far greater gymnasts than, than myself. Uh, but they're not but, watching. Come on, talk yourself up. <laughs> no, no, we gotta stay. We gotta stay uh, on planet Earth. <laughs> Hashtag humble. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing for training now, and uh, now that you're not competing in gymnastics, mm -hmm. what your fitness routine is like. Yeah. So, obviously, prior to kind of connected fitness with tonal it was just oh let's go to the gym and we <laughs> this is kind of funny uh, we would we called it the muggle gym at, at at school because it was like oh what are the these weights and like we're always just in the gymnastics facility like what is this stuff um so it was just going going to the gym going on runs i play actually a lot of tennis uh i have a passion for tennis i love the sport of tennis uh, it's really fun. We can dive into that later. So um, a lot of tonal, a lot of running, and just you know, just staying, staying active. I'm lucky enough to live in Southern California where it's pretty active lifestyle and um, good weather so we can explore the, the great outdoors. But in terms of fitness, tonal is definitely my uh, mainstay in maintaining a certain level of fitness. I mean, if you didn't want to go to the muggle gym in college, you certainly don't want to go now during COVID. So <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> We're going to put that in our advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so was strength has strength training always been a part of your routine? Like, I don't know what the training schedule of a gymnast yeah. is like. Maybe you can enlighten us on if you were strength training and how that fit into your gymnastics training and yeah. then what it's like now. Yeah, it's, it's, that's actually a very interesting question because gymnastics is so um, nuanced in your strength to weight ratio mm. that a traditional lift, lift heavy, lift a lot, move a lot of weight, it's not really applicable because you got it. You have to be, you have to be light. You have to fly, and so mm -hmm. if you're jacked, uh, your your body is going to pay a price and like, oh, you're actually probably 10 pounds heavier than you need to be. And you're strong in ways that are not relevant to your sport. So the traditional strength training, as anyone kind of understands it, of strength and conditioning programs and just lots of weight, um, we actually didn't do. It wasn't until uh, I had a pretty intense rehabilitation cycle after an injury that I was even introduced to the weight room. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a lot of spotting, a, a lot of doing um, body weight exercise with maybe like a 20 pound vest, a lot of spotting or holding positions past failure. Um, but in terms of gymnastics specific strength training, it's really different because it's, um, you have to have very long, lean, wiry um, muscle, quick twitch fibers. 
And that's not typically the, oh, I'm gonna deadlift 10 million pounds or I can squat this. It's like, it doesn't matter because you can't get five feet off the floor like that. Um, so it's, it's different um, in gymnastics, but there, are, there were some areas where strength training, the traditional strength training came in handy during um, injury re rehabilitation. And have you noticed um, like changes in your body since going from that type of training to more traditional strength training? Your body? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. It's one, it very quickly identifies weaknesses. <laughs> like, oh, like I'm, I'm really good at that, but I have no idea what like this looks like or what, what is this deadlift business <laughs> or, or just movements that in gymnastics, you're so in tune to it and it needs to look pretty and everything's extended and nice. And it's like, oh, you, you're not doing a, a deadlift with straight legs or pointed toes and making it look aesthetically pleasing. You're there to do it with good form and move, move some weight. I would love to see that though. Like I'm just yeah. picking a really beautiful deadlift. <laughs> you know, I went to sidebar, I went to a cr CrossFit thing ages ago and was doing the deadlift and so, and like legs straight. And so I was like, Dixon, it's not like a super, like, why are your legs straight? I was like, I don't know. I'm just long lines. I love that. That's amazing. Um, so how are you using tonal? I'm like, what workouts or programs are you doing? What are you liking? What, what's it like for you? I really like um, like the quick hit workouts, the under 25 minute, like either full body or um, body specific in the morning just to like get it going, wake up, get moving, get on with the day. And then at, in the evening or lunch hour, I'll, I will do either a program or, uh, what was one that we did? It was coach Jackson's, uh, no, no, it was the learn, earn and burn. Coach Jared. Yep. Jared. Learn, burn, uh, intensity. Yeah. And then the Pablo's punch punching stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, oh, like delts. So we we got to get it going. I'm, I'm no longer doing handstand push ups. Like, this is getting soft. I need to look, <laughs> I, I need some boulders up here. <laughs> Tank top season's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, you get, always stay ready. It's always <laughs> tank top season. <laughs> but um, no, the, the programs are great because I, I'm not a fan of long workouts, like efficiency. Obviously all the movements and feedback are so critical in tonal. And I think every workout um, really captures that. If you had to say what the main benefit of having tonal would be uh, in your post gymnastics career, what would it be for you? Um, like a, a program, like mm -hmm. it's, you, you have the ability and luxury and opportunity to like, submit to a program of, oh, this is this is now my accountability measure. If somewhere I can't find it in myself to get up, it's like, oh no, like four times a week, let's go. But like, this is the program you're doing. And obviously now convenience, data, feedback, form, all of that is the, the finesse, uh, super detailed part of it. But it, it's like adhering to something that's set out and laid out in front of you. And not going to the muggle gym. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> However much of a show it can be at times, uh, walking 10 paces to my converted, <laughs> converted dining room is very convenient. I saw you have a pretty cool setup. The content you make is, you did one where the camera was going in between the walls somehow. I'm not really sure how you did that, but it was really Oh, cool. yeah. That, so giving credit where credit is due, I am only the muse for my colleague in that in those efforts uh, okay. David he is a genius behind the lens and very creative and helps produce and do a lot of these edits uh, so Dave you're, you're the man in that regard but yeah we've done some pretty cool stuff with uh, digital and photo capture and wow. GoPros and yeah. everything. It's like I gotta step my game up mine are just like sweaty Instagram lives <laughs> Um, I wanted to dive into your morning routine a little bit. Uh, the community is reading Miracle Morning right now as our book club pick of the month. And the author, Hella Elrod, he studied kind of the greats in history and figured out what they did in the beginning of the day to make their 
stay successful. And he boiled it down to these six things and he kind of created this routine. And all of my tonal talk guests who have had a great level of success like you have tend to have really rock solid morning routines. So I was wondering mm-hmm. if you could share a little bit about your morning routine with us. Yeah, so I, I love that. I, I love routine. I creature of habit in terms of like structure works. Sometimes it's a little bit overbearing, but I know it's produced a result for me in a few different arenas. But my morning routine, I'm up pretty early, um, right before five o'clock usually, which is, is early, but I, I don't know. There's something peaceful about getting stuff done, especially on the West Coast, mm-hmm. um, when you know a lot of the West Coast is still sleeping. So that can be chalked up to just my mental crazy of like, a little bit of a competitive advantage. Um, but yeah, get up. Honestly, I work out right away just to get it out of the way, wake up, break a sweat, get moving. And then I feed little Otis, uh, turn on the news, take him for a walk. And then usually by six o'clock, I'm like up, ready, responding to emails. Um, getting out work product of the day, putting together decks and presentations or responding to stuff that came in very late night. Um, But yeah, kind of nothing too crazy. Just, uh, oh yeah, there is food in there. I'm I'm forever forever eating. Nothing too crazy. crazy. Just getting up at 4.45 and starting my day before 6 a.m. But like, it's casual. <laughs> I just I just like getting getting up and going. And my parents definitely knew I was crazy early in terms of like boom, 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 boom. Um, because I remember waking up and like, mom, dad, don't you guys ever feel behind? Because when we're eating breakfast, like the East Coast is on lunch. And they were probably like, they're like, Josh, you're six. Oh my God. <laughs> Sign him up for gymnastics. <laughs> I just like to get moving in the morning. Well, speaking of structure and routine, going from the level of competition that you were at and the level of mm-hmm. training with, you know, I'm sure you have practices twice a day, coaches telling you, blocking mm-hmm. up the schedule every day, meal plans, flexibility training, everything. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine what it was like. What was it like going from that to retiring and all of a sudden having all of this freedom uh, in your time and your schedule? And how did you take what you learned in your gymnastics career and apply it to growing your business career? Yeah, um, great question. Lots of components to it. The This is actually very relevant because even in the past year, it's the, the mental game of... Uh, I mean, you see the stories of athletes kind of going into depression after they're done with their sport. And it's like, oh, like, boo-hoo, like, you have lots of Olympic medals, so what? But the the point that I really like that it's being brought to light, even through HBO's documentary with Michael Phelps and a lot of other exposés, is you got to think about it. So for so much of your life as an athlete, it's dedicated to your sport. So, like, friends our second fiddle family, sometimes second fiddle. Like it's about you and getting to the top or whatever that top is defined by you. And then you're praised or admired for doing the impossible and holding rare air in whatever field you're in or whatever sport you're perfecting. And then overnight you're a regular. So it's, it's a, it is, it's a loss of identity of like, Holy crap, I am not relevant. Mm-hmm. And, anyone in any field can relate to oh yes stay relevant stay current Mm -hmm. like contribute to something i think it's maybe you can chalk it up to that of i'm actually now not contributing to like my own goals and objectives or a team or a purpose purpose, yeah Yeah. and it's heavy because your your first 20 25 years of life is that Mm -hmm. um so moving from that, thankfully, um, I have very supportive family and friends, and my my parents always kept a balance of we don't we do not care how good you are at your sport, like if you're not going to school, you're not going to practice. Mm-hmm. Um, 
like maintain a social life with your friends, maintain interests outside of that. And it wasn't really until college that I realized that's actually very important, especially mm -hmm. in sports where your lifespan is so short. Um, so initially it was a shock of like, oh my God, I have a lot of freedom to do whatever the heck I want. But at the same time, I knew I had I'd set up goals and objectives and kind of pivots while I was in the final years of sport to kind of utilize or really dive into those arenas that were always, I was always very inquisitive about and learned about and have degrees by, um, but am now kind of free to explore that rather than having the big question mark of what am I, who am I, what do I do, et cetera. And obviously mentors and guidance and support structure is critical in that. Um, but I, that navigating was probably a little bit less painful or traumatic um, based upon just the community of which I was fortunate to be in. But then kind of taking that skill set of kind of the mental the aptitude or strength or whatever you want to call it into, or the competitive nature into working on a campaign, working in a DC Senate office, working in consulting and private practice. It's like, oh, it's actually very applicable of like at work, ask for help, perform, like get it done. Um, kind of be just intrinsically motivated to, to do what needs to get done, to contribute to something or to an organization or a goal that you really want. Um, so that's where the applicable skill sets come into play. It sounds like your your parents did a really amazing job helping you keep perspective and a balance that you were able to translate over. You were able to transfer your purpose from gymnastics more towards business and other endeavors in your life. So mm -hmm. got to gotta, gotta give the parents a little shout out. Yeah, Par par parents get a shout out, and we'll we'll take a quick little tangent of <laughs> um, the that perspective and kind of weight is heavier on me now just knowing uh, the circumstance in which I was brought into uh, the family. My, my sisters and I were all adopted at birth. Mm -hmm. We know what, we, are, we have eyes on what could have been if not for being adopted in that opportunity. So kind of, I don't want to sound preachy or anything, but knowing that we've been afforded a great opportunity at life is um, a real internal motivation um, past um, adolescence and sport and the very protected world of uh, high level athletics. So I was like, oh shoot, like, here we go. We got to do something here because you have an opportunity right away. And it's a privilege to have that. You've been given a gift and all comes back to gratitude. And I think any of us can find something to feel that gratitude about that can motivate us. Doesn't necessarily have to be being adopted or what have you, but um, we all have things in our life that we can be grateful for. Um, so I think that's a really great point to bring up. Um, speaking of kind of moving through life and challenging times, uh, Atonal, we believe in building strength, physical strength, so that you are building confidence and self-efficacy mm -hmm. to use that strength when times are tough, when you need to muster up a little courage or get through some tough time. Can you tell us about a time when you needed to use not just your physical strength, but a little bit of internal, mental, emotional strength as well? Ah, yes. So... There were two, I'll bring it back to the world of sport, um, two major injury points. Um, one was 2011, I was, we had just finished, I had just finished my collegiate career. I had done a good job that year, our team won, and I, I was done with my NCAA responsibilities. And it was like, okay, national team, world championships this summer, Olympic games next year. And I had, I tore my Achilles actually at a training camp at the Olympic Training Center. Um, and I, it was one of the first major injuries that I had. I was like, whoa, whoa, like I've been fortunate to not have some of these major setbacks, but here we go. Like, do I, do I just rehab and quit? Is it a tight timeline? Where do I want to go? So a lot of introspection happened there. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it was, you're going to regret if you don't see this through. Um, and then in that, like, literally relearning how to use like your left leg of 
like you have no calf for the first four months and then going up on your toe and everything hurts and but you know you have to go compete in about eight months so just a mental um challenge in terms of what the heck like i literally can't do anything um and then just physically having to rebuild and reframe and restructure and reprogram your body of how to do that um was it was challenging it's it's there is a lot of support staff around to do all of these rehabilitation and different modalities and sleeping in hyperbaric chambers and crazy rehab protocol, ag aggressive, but needing to be aggressive rehab protocol. Uh, but that, that was tough. I remember waking up in the middle of the night after the first day after and just being in so much pain and like literally moaning because it's like, uh, like I can't, I can't move my foot. I can't even wiggle my toes. So it was like, oh shoot, like the gift of health is real. And right now you don't have it. So that was a, a trying existence. And then very similar to another injury, like my entire left shoulder is redone. Um, joint, bicep tendon, shredded, rotator cuff, yeah. tendon relocation, um, the whole, all the whole shebang. And for shoulders, it's just so, such an unstable joint. Uh, it's like a, our surgeon explained it as like golf tee and a golf ball. Yeah. Uh, it's not and, and then obviously with gymnastics, you need uh, extreme range of motion and strength to match. And that was just, it, that was tough. Uh, I was in Colorado at the time and we were doing passive range of motion. The next day I had a pulse ox on my finger to make sure I wasn't passing out. Mm -hmm. Towel and like, we got to get to 180 and this is hard. And yeah. um, it was, and I, I knew I had to compete in six months after a total shoulder reconstruction. So there, there are times like, why am I doing this? This is a torturous existence. But again, kind of the same, you, you've been given a gift to compete and participate at this level and like quitting is not really an option because it's, it's so much more than just you at this juncture. Um, so it's tough, but it's it's part it's part of the sport. Everyone goes through it in sport or not uh, when they're perfecting a craft that they're passionate about. I mean, even just in with our community members, we see injuries sidelining people, whether mm -hmm. they you know tweak their back or you know they're not. We might not be competing for the Olympics, all of us, but um, you know we still have setbacks. So mm -hmm. if there one piece of advice you could give us, like one thing that maybe went through your head or one thing that you watched or read that would help us, um, what would that be? Ooh, baby steps. Baby steps. Um, you're just one day, it's like, it's just start by starting. Like you're not going to go from zero to a hundred and like sustain that type of trajectory. So like just if you're chipping away a methodical, disciplined approach to any uh, any either recovery or further achievement uh, just baby step it and know that it's 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 okay like you don't need to to get crazy <laughs> with it um, that's a good point because if you don't take those baby steps then you get injured <laughs> yeah uh, my, our, my one of my college coaches always said like the strength is in the struggle I was like, oh like <laughs> no, it's not. But very quickly, I learned that it is, and it's uh, yeah. That resilience is built in, just chipping away, being the consistent little tortoise here. Yeah building resiliency. Absolutely. We had a community member right on one of your, when I shared one of your videos, she said that her son, her youngest son loves playing, loves gymnastics. He's been training for gymnastics, but he was actually bullied by some kids who were saying, you know, that's a, that's a girl sport. What are you doing doing gymnastics? And mm -hmm. I don't know if he is still doing it or not. I didn't get the follow-up backstory, but I wanted to just ask like, what, message do you have for that kid and or for other kids who are maybe being teased for being different or mm -hmm. just going through a hard time with following their passions like you did yeah that when when i saw that i saw your question when we were chatting about this earlier 
I was, I was thinking, I was like, oh, was I ever bullied for gymnastics? And I, maybe, or I was so oblivious to it. Um, but kind of what you would say to someone like that is, uh, for, for so, so many of us, or for so much of us, like being normal when you're younger is like, what is normal? You're trying to fit in and do, do what's popular, what, what everyone else is. And then suddenly, some, somewhere down the road, everyone's trying to find ways to stand out. And you're, it's coveted to stand out. It's like you would tell any, I would tell any youth athlete or someone in this bullying or being the subject of bullying, it's like you're already standing out. So you're, you're ahead of the game. So that's, we can keep that secret between you and I, like, trust me on this one because I have some years on you. This is how, this is how it goes. Everyone wants to fit in and then everyone wants to stand out. That's what you're, 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 already, you're already standing out. Um, and then in terms of just kind of dissecting what bullying is, it's just, it, it is a projection of an insecurity of the person bullying you. Um, so it's like, oh, wow, like they're just mentally weak or jealous or so unhappy with whatever the heck they're doing or who they are that they, they have to take it out on someone. So like, okay, you can, you can be that unfortunate recipient, but just know that that's where it comes from and it's not a reflection of what, what you are, what you're doing and like how you're choosing to live your life. I love that reframe that like you're ahead of the game. Just give it a few years. They're all going to come knocking because it's so yeah. true. So we, we all want to like do, we all want to do what each other's doing. And then yeah. when we're all teenagers, it's like, how are we standing out from each other? Like, right. Oh, I already did it. <laughs> Next. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, well, speaking of standing out, you to me are someone who stands out among a crowd. You've achieved extreme levels of success in many different arenas, and from sport to business to having the world's cutest dog. Well, don't tell Luna I said that. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, the, a theme in our book club book this month, Miracle Morning, is living a level 10 life. And that just means mm -hmm. looking at different levels of your life, areas of your life, and seeing, you know, what does that level 10 picture look like from family mm -hmm. to career to health and fitness to spirituality um what does a level 10 life look like for you and what are the steps action steps you take to get there like how have you built this life and where do you want it to go oh uh, that's a that's a great question the the level <laughs> 10 life <laughs> i mean we can all have the like the pictures of like the the perceived level 10 perfection of but like sometimes we don't even know what a level 10 life looks like until we're, we're down that road of just maximizing who you are what and what you're doing and how you're doing it um i would say kind of the first step in that is goal setting which sounds very remedial but and just sure. obvious but so many times especially on the heels of 2020 just the the commingling of a lot of things and kind of okay let's take a beat here are the goals in this category in this category in this category and am i actively um taking steps to achieve them through introspection knowledge of myself and am i maximizing output toward that goal um so i, I the comparison is needed sometimes oh my god he has that she has that yeah, it's, it's human nature competition but like the the heaviest most rewarding and kind of coolest competition at times it's like am i are you are you really giving it your best effort and have you defined what it is um which is something we're, all, we're always figuring out and i'm yeah. always figuring that out in, in in multiple arenas but um that that would be the level 10 definition of maximizing um, your potential sounds your, like your output. Yeah. And that sounds so cliche and <laughs> basic, but yeah, kind of just maximizing what, what you can do and where you want to go. 
Don't worry, no one's calling you basic in the tonal family. Oh, I am a full-fledged basic. That's why I like <laughs> my pumpkin spice latte. I mean, I showed you my slippers before we talked about basic. <laughs> Um, but we are working on building healthy habits in the community mm -hmm. this January. And you're someone who's built a lot of success off of a lot of small moments and small habits that you've built up over time. And you're you're still you're still living out these healthy habits of waking up at 4:45 in the morning, etc. Um, what is one piece of advice you have for the community about how we can build healthy, sustainable habits for the new year? Um kind of one again kind of just start by starting it's, mm -hmm. it's oh diet starts tomorrow or like i'll join this program right just start uh your body and mind are marvelous things and can adapt and if you have like the will to do it and kind of the discipline it's like oh yeah like that sucked so like that workout was hell on earth but like we're gonna come back and do it again because the, we're, we have we have the moxie and the discipline to like get to where we want to go in like kind of one step at a time mentality. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just take the digestible pieces in any approach to something is start right now. Really the way to go and just, get on your tunnel right now. <laughs> just, just and the what, what was it? The the movie Secretariat. When at the end, she's like, just let it run, Ronnie, let it run. <laughs> like, just go. Like, just go. Don't be afraid. Like, it's okay, okay to fail. It, it's actually, failure is good because that means, what, what was it, Steve Jobs? Like, decisions are being made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, let's fail and readjust. And at the same time, don't be afraid of like, achievement. Mm. Of, like, sometimes it's very scary. And I, I had this conversation yesterday. Um, was recently plugged in to help mentor high school student athlete looking to get into the collegiate pipeline. Mm. And, uh, something that one of my coaches told me is like, you're, you're afraid of actually being very good or achieving whatever it is you want to do in your sport. And you literally haven't said that out loud, like that you want to win this or you want to hit this score or do this skill or this routine like just saying it and not being afraid of like oh you know what like what happens if i do that like, sometimes that's kind of scary for people so just like saying it out honestly just saying it out loud like owning your power yeah, yeah. I love that. There, are, there are some that are non-negotiable like me and gummy bears or like candy i won't eat candy for two days <laughs> <laughs> you can do those like smart snacks or whatever. I used to have them all the time. Smart sweets, they're at Whole Foods. They're so good. They're like barely any sugar. I don't know. My friend got me addicted to them. <laughs> I've seen the I've seen no, the new one good. of a uh, restricted intake during training. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, when I told our nutritionist, it feels like I'm playing Survivor, but training for the Olympics. I can't even imagine. Uh, I can do little cheat days. Yeah, for sure. It's all about balance, right? And now you're able to live that a little bit more. <laughs> we did have a question come in, and we're going to get to it. And while I'm looking for it in the comments, and if anyone has any more comments for Josh, please put them below. But I wanted to ask Josh, our what we ask all of our guests: What does it mean for you to be your strongest? Hmm. Um, this is a, this is a good one. Uh, I would say like at just at the end of the day, like just looking like did you do everything to maximize like the tasks at hand for that day? Or like did you what was your purpose and did you give that you're all whether that's and it sounds really weird in terms of like oh like your purpose of that day is to unplug and do nothing and be mm -hmm. offline and kind of reset and breathe like did you do that or like did you do this problem set or this work product or like to to your max like do you have a regret about that day so i guess that would be my 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 10 or being my strongest of like did i do did I do that day or that week or that year, quarter, month, X, Y, Z, um, to where I know, like, okay, that was good. Like, we we did I did we did some cool stuff there. 
like I, it's, it's, in order to know that you have to write it down you have to track mm -hmm. it just like and everyone all of our tonal members love tracking their data on tonal and it's kind of taking that mindset of seeing oh i lifted this last week and i lifted this this week into your life and saying okay mm -hmm. I, accomplished, I wrote it down what i did this week and now i can look at it compared to the next week or day to day so um goes back to what you said about saying what you want out loud writing it down and then going back and looking back retrospectively to say mm -hmm was I my, did I live up to my potential? Yeah, it's what, we're all living for that ding ding of the PR. Yes, and the little black circle. Oh my gosh, if I have a white circle and a sea of black, I I can't look at my app. <laughs> it has to be all black. Um, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. We did have a question come in from Lawrence Goldstein that I'm going to put on the screen. We're fancy like that, Josh. Oh, wow. uh, Lawrence asked, any advice on mindset or mindfulness and how to take it to the next level needed to represent the USA on the world stage? The better my mindset, the better my workout feels on tonal. Thank you. Your videos on gymnastics rings are nuts, he says. Are horrible. I was so bad on rings. <laughs> dot, 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 censored by our platform. <laughs> I'm too evenly proportioned and tall to be good on rings. Um, <laughs> I mean, you fooled us. <laughs> mindset, mindfulness to take us to the next level. Nature. Um, okay, so kind of getting into hey, this is so perfect. We are talking about this with one of my friends earlier. Um, kind of finding that headspace to maximize the workout. So. For me, what that looked like is um, I would find that, I don't want to say that meditative state, but that the headspace to show up to a practice or to a training session, I would find that through music. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, oh, like I'm present. This song or playlist got me there and just being cognizant of like, oh, what, what do you need to do to enter that med headspace to then take that into the task at hand. And it's it almost seems like, oh, there's work before the work, but you're you're maximizing that 20, 15, 20, 45 minute workout. And if it takes you two minutes to do that, to come out of that workout, like, oh, okay, like I was present, I showed up, I was I I went there even before I entered. Um, and that work, that quick little work on the front end is worth it. Sometimes. So are you saying that you would kind of like sit with your music and maybe like eyes closed, visualize what you're going to do throughout your workout? Yeah. Um, kind of just, I guess for, it would ebb and flow. Um, kind of if we were going through a tough training day, it's like just accept that this, the next three hours are going to be hell on <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it so just get through it because you're going to be better for it mm -hmm. at three hours and one minute um so we're kind of getting into that like acceptance of the work piece of it and like oh wait, josh we don't need the theatrics and the drama of uh, i used to have the worst that used to be very dramatic <laughs> um in training my college coach gave me some tough love and really mentored me through that um, but kind of getting to any headspace that provides clarity of what's coming and it might, it's going to, it might be easy, you might, might be on, you might be a suffering existence, but kind of just being present yeah. before you get there. And do you have any go-to songs or playlists? Oh. Genres? I know I didn't prep you for this question, but like, what's your, what's your favorite? One moment in time covered by Whitney Houston. No. Um, <laughs> It, honestly, it ranges. I'm, I'm an old soul when it comes to music. my wall is littered with artists from the '60s. Um, honestly, it, it can be anything from like techno to like literally Etta James or Marlena Shaw to Kygo to Stevie Wonder songs in the key of life to <laughs> it. It's quite the workout playlist. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, that, that's not always my workout playlist, but just kind of that set. Those set tunes are all over the place. Yeah, whatever gets. <laughs> <you. laughs> like 
some of the running jokes when I was competing, like, oh, Josh always has his headphones, yada, yada, yada. And like my close friends are like, oh, pe people would assume like, oh, he's like trying to pump himself up. He's, he's got something going. And some of my best friends are like, oh, honey, he's listening to Aretha Franklin. Like, <laughs> Don't read into it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask him for his playlist. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, be you, be you, be different. Um, Josh, thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy and your insights with us. You are very inspirational, especially whenever I watch those videos. I'm like, if Josh can do that on those rings or that bar or whatever, I can go do my tonal workout. So thank you for pro providing that little extra oomph for, for me. And I know many of our members to get through our, our workouts and our days. Uh, where can people find you or connect with you? Oh, oh, uh, I guess through, through social social media, uh, I guess Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm pretty, pretty responsive to, to everyone. And I think it's connected to my email and everything. So, or Facebook. I'll... I'll, I'll make comments. Oh my God, some of these, I don't know them by name, but in the tonal community, I'll yeah. see some of these posts like, holy crap, like good job. Like <laughs> it's actually very inspiring to see people take ownership of their fitness and their, their just like, oh, goals and through workout and programming. It's like, we have an incredible community, whether it's someone doing their first strength training workout ever, or we just had someone, Dave, he just broke 46,000 pounds in a workout. Like what? I think that's a new record on Tonal. Crazy stuff. So we have a pretty incredible community and we're very, very grateful to have you as part of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm equally grateful to be part of this connected fitness community and obviously the Tonal team and everyone everyone using the, the device. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We're gonna have to get you on there, give, coaching, giving us some uh, some Josh gymnastic <laughs> workouts or something, some like calisthenics. I don't know, that would be pretty epic, I think. I'm making Here's your workout, go do a five minute handstand against the wall. <laughs> Let me know when you're shaking at 30 seconds. We could like flip the, the image on tonal so it's upside down so you can walk <laughs> upside down. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so much, Josh, and have a great rest of your evening. Yeah, you as well. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining Tonal Talk. Please join me next week on Tuesday, not Wednesday. I'll be joined by our new guest coaches, Venus, Nikki, and Jake, talking all about their health and fitness journey, how they came to yoga, um, what, they, what they're bringing to Tonal, and kind of their unexpected benefits that they've all received um, coming from more strength or fitness oriented backgrounds going into yoga and how that can be applicable for you and your training. So tune in next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, I think that's it for me. I'm going to go do a yoga right now and I'll see you all in the group. Have a good evening. <laughs>